Hey everyone, Jamie here from China Sea Travel on a Monday, October 7, 2024. Welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, thanks for joining us as we try to get you up to speed with what's going on in cruising. In addition to our usual cruise vlogs, port guides, tips and tricks videos and cruise reviews, we want to put out some regular content that would shed some light on current cruise topics that might affect you and that could help you have a better cruise experience. For today's sailing, we've got some information about another hurricane getting ready to slam into the southeast part of the country. We're going to cover an Alaskan cruise port that's not too happy about you stopping there on your cruise, and we'll talk about what ship might be sailing from Galveston in 2026. And of course, we'll visit with Sharon for one of her awesome cruise tips as well. First, let's jump in line and get checked right in with our top story. Another major storm is heading towards the southeast part of the country, and it should be making landfall midweek on the west coast of Florida. Tropical storm Milton, currently centered in the Gulf of Mexico and heading east at a rapid pace, began as a tropical depression that has been gaining intensity, and Milton's expected to reach a Category 2 or 3 or somewhere in that neighborhood level hurricane as it reaches land. Milton should reach the Florida coast Wednesday afternoon with extremely heavy rainfall and winds possibly gusting all the way up to 120 miles an hour, give or take a little bit there. Despite some uncertainty how Milton will play out, destructive storm surges are expected in the Tampa and surrounding area, but Milton could be large enough to affect the entire Gulf Coast of Florida. From a cruise standpoint, current cruises scheduled to cross paths with the storm are making adjustments, and some Tampa-based cruises have made some slight changes already, but as of yet, there are not any major itinerary changes going on for the rest of the Florida cruise ports. With the majority of cruisers coming in and out of Florida over the weekends, cruise lines are hoping that the storm will have passed over Florida and will be dissipating in the Atlantic Ocean as the weekend cruise crowd rolls in. The severity of the storm and the cleanup needed in the aftermath could still play a part in cruise schedules. Make sure if you have travel scheduled for the weekend that you've signed up for things like text alerts from your cruise line and that you continue to monitor the storm. That's exactly what we'll be doing because we're going to be heading west to Fort Lauderdale Sunday afternoon for our Princess Cruise leaving on Monday morning. Now on a personal note, we hope everyone stays safe and secure. We know that many people are still recovering from Hurricane Helene and news of another tropical storm is not what anyone wanted to hear right now. Now let's travel across the country from the southeast corner all the way to the Great Pacific Northwest. As this year's Alaska cruise season comes to an end, so does the effort of many Juneau, Alaska residents to pass a proposal to restrict cruise ships carrying more than 250 passengers from calling on the port of Juneau on Saturdays. The No Ship Saturday initiative has been closely monitored by Juneau residents with local municipal voting beginning last week and ballot counting ending officially on October 14th. An argument was made on behalf of Juneau residents that the city has become overrun by tourists and the locals would like at least one day of the week without being inundated by cruisers and cruise ships. It was reported that opponents of the initiative, including local businesses, the local Chamber of Commerce, and even cruise lines, including Disney, spent over $600,000 on a campaign to block the initiative. And that might sound like a lot of money, but when you realize there are millions of dollars at stake and at risk of being lost, it doesn't sound like that much. Now, on the other hand, those in favor of the No Ship Saturday proposition could only muster up about $1,000 towards the campaign in favor of the vote. Now, I'm not making those numbers up. Those are official numbers that were put out uh, locally there. Now, that low number might be just one of the reasons that the initiative to block cruise ships on Saturdays in Juneau looks to have been defeated. Initial vote counts have those against the proposal at just under 3,900 votes, while a little over 2,500 votes were cast in favor of the proposal. Now, elections with propositions like this one in Juneau are conducted by mail. And although ballots will be accepted and counted, through the 14th of October, as long as they're postmarked on or before Election Day, the result is not expected to change. So the good news for cruisers is your Saturday port stops in Juneau will continue as planned, but in the event you notice a, a Juneau local kind of giving you the evil eye as you visit the area, now you know why. They were probably just hoping for a quiet Saturday afternoon to enjoy the amazing part of the country with family and friends. Now as usual, let's make a quick pit stop over at Guest Services and see what Sharon from Sharon Sea Travel has in store for us today. Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to share something with you that is kind of fresh on my mind because I was just reading about it in one of the travel agent groups I'm in online. And this happened to another um, travel agent's client. So their booking was canceled and neither the travel agent or the client canceled it. 
Now, how did this happen? Well, after a little investigating, um, I kind of followed the story along, a little investigating. It looks like the guest had put some shore excursions in their cart, never paid for them, just kind of left them in their cart, logged out of the reservation, and they just were sitting there. Well, the system somehow generated a cancellation because it looked like they had an unpaid balance. It was after their final payment date, they were paid in full, and then this charge came back on and it sat there for a few days and I guess it got the cruise canceled. So keep that in mind next time. If you're in your reservation, you're adding things to the cart, one thing you wanna do is either pay for them and get a confirmation or make sure you delete them out of your cart before you um, log out. I know this doesn't happen with all cruise lines and all the time it's not a frequent occurrence, but it can happen and I don't want that to happen to you. So always make sure you have a free and clear cart when logging out of your reservation. Now let's get back to Jamie and see what he has to finish up the video. Hey, thanks, Sharon. That was an awesome cruise tip. Thanks so much. We appreciate it. Hey, now real quick, do me a favor. If you're enjoying the content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Like the video if you're enjoying it and turn on notifications so you're always aware of new content coming out. We're gonna have some cruise vlogs coming your way. We go live on Monday nights every other week. So it's a lot of fun over here and we appreciate you joining us. Now, before we finish today's little cruise through the news, we need some LNP. No, not that LNP. I'm talking about our last news point. Now looking ahead, 2026 cruise bookings are already in full swing and they're rocking and rolling. But at last check, the only cruise line that has not released their 2026 summer cruising schedule is Royal Caribbean. Now it's a topic that comes up often with people trying to get a head start on their 2026 summer plans. I know people are asking Sharon all the time, when's this cruise line announcing? When's that cruise line announcing? Well, word on the street is there may be one big reason for that. Well, actually two big reasons. Royal Caribbean's finalizing plans for exactly where their icon class ships, you know, the icon of the seas and the eagerly awaited star of the seas will be sailing from at that time. Now, right now, Star of the Seas is scheduled to debut from Port Canaveral in the summer of 2025. And you know, Icon of the Seas has been sailing out of Miami since it came out here locally in the US. But many people think Royal Caribbean might wanna add a bigger ship to Galveston, Texas, and that could be Icon of the Seas. Now, currently Royal sails Oasis class ship Harmony of the Seas from Galveston with Allure of the Seas taking over in the not too distant future. Icon has bookings from Miami through April 2026, but I wouldn't be surprised if they did a little Dancing of the Ships deal and tried to find a way to keep an Oasis class ship in Galveston and add one of their Icon class mega ships to Galveston as well, since they have their own port and they could rotate big ships in and out of there as they like. With Galveston cruising growing so rapidly, this kind of move could make a lot of sense and they could surely fill those ships up with those Texans that love to cruise. Have you ever cruised from Texas? Those folks really know how to party. Let me know. All the Texans out there, if you're watching the video, say hi, shout out in the, uh, in the comments section. We'd love to hear from you. Finally, as we debark the video, we like to take a look at a viewer comment or question. In a recent video, we talked about a gastrointestinal virus outbreak on a Royal Caribbean ship that happened just a few weeks ago. And we asked if anyone out there has been through something like that, and if so, were they charged for any medical treatment? Well, we did get a great response from Long JH 1953 and he replied with the following comment, Jamie, good question from the viewers. We experienced a norovirus outbreak in 2015. Norwegian Cruise Line acknowledged the outbreak and informed the guests medical charges were waived and we earned a 24 hour quarantine. Now I know this response and issue dated back on NCL from about 10 years ago, but I bet Long JH remembers that time like it was yesterday. Also, he mentions earning a 24 hour quarantine. And for that, I would say thank you. And I commend you because it tells me that instead of being sick and just kind of hiding it, laying low, walking around the ship and not telling anyone, you went to the infirmary and let the doctor know and you gotta respect someone for being upfront about not feeling well on the ship. By doing that, you probably saved a lot of other people from getting sick and uh, that quarantine was probably very helpful. So thanks for the comment, Long JH, and for being a subscriber. Now make sure to leave a comment or ask any question about cruising in the comments below the video when we're done here. And maybe your post will be featured in one of our upcoming videos. Well, that's it for today. Thanks so much for joining us. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you come see us on Facebook at the Sharon at Sea Cruise Crew. That's right, Sharon at Sea Cruise Crew. Also book your next cruise with Sharon. Send her an email at Sharon at Sea at gmail.com to get things started. Thanks for sailing with us and we'll see you in the next video.